as director of choral and vocal music here. I direct both of the uh, college choirs. We have JJC Chamber Singers and JJC Community Chorale. The piece is entitled Gospel Songs Missa Brevis, uh, dedicated to my all of my choir members past and present here at JJC. It's the longest piece I've ever composed, uh, seven minutes long, which doesn't sound long in the scheme of things. A Missa Brevis is uh, a, a musical form that's been used for literally hundreds of years. It, it means short mass, and so unlike the five uh, sections in a normal mass, uh, there are only two or three musical sections. I discovered that none of those, although they're usually or often based on pre-existing melodies of some kind, perhaps chant melodies, there had never been a Missa Brevis based upon American, uh, African American spirituals. Uh, I think there's an interesting story behind the first movement, which is the Kyrie, and that is that uh, it came out of a visit over spring break of last year, 2017, that my wife and I made to Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, and I started talking with one of the basket weavers there. The, there are a number of basket weavers of Gullah descent, were descendants of African American slaves, and this woman was sitting outside uh, taking the native sweet grass, which grows all around that part of South Carolina, and weaving it into the most beautiful uh, containers. Uh, quite expensive, actually, to buy. I didn't buy one, but I was fascinated with the process. and. Um, so that gave me the idea for the first movement of the piece. Uh, sometimes I feel like a motherless child, uh, which uh, reflects the, the pain and the hope both that the African American slaves lived with, I think, on a daily basis. And so I took um, that melody uh, and, and had the choir slide up and down on it as if they were weaving that part of the basket with other choir parts uh, murmuring on a single pitch um, a couple of phrases like sometimes I feel, sometimes I feel, sometimes I feel in a cluster of very close pitches uh, or motherless child, motherless child and the melody would weave up and down through that uh, giving it that basket weave effect of bringing that to life in the music. You know I feel like I, I share a deep part of myself uh, as a musician with my choir members, my students at every rehearsal, every class, uh, but it takes it to uh, another level when rather than working with them on compositions of other composers, when I can work with them on something that I've created myself. It's a, it's a risky venture, it's also a very satisfying venture, and I think it's a deeper venture overall. Hopefully they get to know me a little bit as a musician, a little bit better through that when I'm not working on somebody else's work, but on my own work, and uh, I feel that uh, it's a great gift to me that people would risk, uh, take that risk and that, that trust level that's involved with singing something that has been created for them or perhaps for the, uh, going to be sung for the first time. I hopefully, uh, it's, I'm, I'm creating something that perhaps outlasts me, you know, give it, leaving something, uh, I, I don't mean this immodestly, but all artists like to leave something uh, to the world after they're gone.